Now, when we code a finite element uh, problem, um, we generally store uh, the the vectors as one-dimensional arrays and and tensors, second-order tensors as two-dimensional arrays, and so on. So we use vector and tensor notations. And um, in the in the previous lecture, we have seen uh, we have introduced this notation where we can use the summation convention over the directions which go from 1 to 3 as well as the number of nodes uh, with indices that we have denoted by capital letters. So uh, we need to, once we have derived a particular equation, so for example, once we have derived the expression for let's say fii external in terms of our new notation, small small letter capital letter notation uh, we need to convert this into a, a, a form that the computer can be coded in that can be coded into the computer so so we do a transfer uh, of this equation from the initial notation to what is known as a void notation so again it's a recipe uh, and i'm going to explain the recipe to you the recipe is like this. First, when you do the void notation, uh, when, when you start transferring some initial notation equation into void notation, you make this mapping. So in 3D, let's say we make this mapping that uh, quantities, 1, 1 quantities will go to 1, 2, 2 quantities will go to 2, 3, 3 will go to 3, 2, 3 will go to 4, 1, 3 will go to 5 and 1, 2 will go to 6. So this is uh, this is a common mapping that is used. You can use a different mapping, but uh, your uh, your conversion into the Wyck notation, your conversion into matrices and vectors, matrices and single dimensional arrays would depend on this mapping. So whatever mapping you choose, you have to freeze it and you have to abide by it for the rest of the procedure. In um, so, so in many cases, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 1, 2, 2, 3, 1, 3 is also used. That's also valid. But we will use this mapping throughout this course for 3D and this mapping for 2D. So this is uh, what we need. And then uh, we know that sigma ij, let's say in 2D, has component sigma 1, 1, sigma 2, 2, sigma 1, 2. So this will go to sigma 1 in the white notation. This will go to sigma 2 because 1, 1 maps to 1, 2, 2 maps to 2, and 1, 2 maps to 3. So this is what will happen. Similarly, uh, the strains are epsilon 1, 1, epsilon 2, 2, and 2, epsilon 1, 2, and they will go to uh, the first, uh, epsilon 1, 1 will go to the first entry in the array, 2, 2 will go to the second entry in the array and 212 will go to the third entry in the array because this is the mapping that we have used. Similarly, for uh, three dimensions, uh, we, will, we will be able to do it for the six components of stress and the six components of strain. Okay, now, uh, now how, how, do we, how do we manage the Hooke's law? Uh, so for Hooke's law, sigma ij equal to cij kl epsilon kl. Now, uh, take two at a time. So sigma ij will be mapped to let's say an index a. So this ij will also be mapped to a. kl will be mapped to some index b and this will be mapped to the same index b. So your uh, in void notation this will be written as sigma a equal to c a b epsilon b. So the mapping we know if sigma if ij is 1 1 this will be mapped to 1 ij is uh, 2 3 this will be mapped to uh, 4 and so on and so forth. So depending on the value of kl we know the mapping that we will be we are going to use and uh, based on that mapping this can be written down right away uh, in void notation. When we have quantities that are indexed with both capital and small indices. For example, we have, let's say, an equation, which we'll encounter later, but right now, just take it as an equation. Uh, epsilon ij is equal to b ij capital ik uik. Remember, this i and k have to 
always the capital and small have to appear together for every capital you must have an accompanying small uh, in that case uh, this has a meaning this has a specific meaning as i said the number of degrees of freedom have to be equal to the dimension of the problem so let's say the dimension of the problem is nst then uh, if you have so this ik will now transfer to uh, void index b where b is given by capital i minus 1 into the dimension of the problem plus k so uh, if you are talking about say the second displacement uh, in the third node of the element so this is the node number this is your capital i and this is your um, small k let's say so then this means it will be stored in the void notation in uh, 3 minus 1 into let's say it's a two dimension three dimensional problem 3 plus 2 that is 2 6 plus 8 eighth location in the displacement vector so when you store this displacement when you store this displacement where capital I is equal to 3 and small k is equal to 2 then you'll store it in the 8th location so so uh, that's how we do it ij depending on whether ij is 1 1 or 2 2 or 1 2 etc will map to let's say a then this ij will also map to a but the capital ik will map to b where b is given by this b depends on the values of i and k and uik will also map to the same b so these two will both map to the same b where b will be given by this okay again this will work only if the number of degrees of freedom per node is exactly equal to the dimension of the problem there are three displacements for 3d two displacements for 2d and one for 1d so that is when this is going to work now uh, what about the stiffness matrix so let's do it this way so let's take the internal force internal force we have already looked at f i i is del n i del x j sigma j i d b so uh, what we do is we uh, add we write the sigma j i as delta i m sigma j m which because the m will the m will be knocked off is equal to sigma I, sigma j i so this is how we write the sigma j i so this whole thing this whole thing we defined as b j m i i so b j m i i is equal to del n i del x j delta i m uh, the order of the indices is a bit strange j comes first m then capital i then and small i in the end but this is how we do it okay this is just a definition uh, that we made up and we call this quantity b j m i i times sigma j m d b is your internal force now in void notation j m depending on the combined value of j and m will go to let's say b index b and i i depending on the values of capital i and small i you will use the dimension of the problem and this formula and you will come up with a, a index let's say a and <coughs> and uh, whatever the index of jm is will also be carried over to the stress so this will be b as well and i i will be a so uh, in white notation the eighth eighth entry in the array storing the internal forces will be given by bba uh, sigma b db which is also another way of writing b transpose sigma db okay so b will become a, a matrix sigma is a vector and 
this is how you will write it in void notation and this is how you will code it in your finite elements. Now, uh, let's do an example. So, uh, suppose I have defined just like I did in the previous slide, I have defined a quantity b i j i k as this. So, how would I write it in matrix form? Uh, this is how it goes. So, now uh, let us say I am writing it for node i equal to 1. So, I am writing uh, quantities b i j 1 uh, sorry 1 k equal to d okay so now uh, in void notation this and let's say we are dealing with 2d just for just for the sake of simplicity we are dealing with 2d so ij can take uh, three values 1 1 2 2 1 2 so this will be 3 and ik can take um, maximum of um, so remember this will lead to i minus 1 into dimension of the problem which is equal to 2 plus k and this will uh, this will this can take a maximum of um, so if you have a four noded four noded uh, quadrilateral then this will have a maximum of uh, eight uh, maximum value of eight because there are four nodes so i can maximum be four there are two degrees of freedom per node so uh, this can i can maximum be four so uh, four minus one into two is six plus two is eight that's the maximum it can be so this will finally be a 3 cross 8, 3 cross 8 uh, matrix. In case of i equal to 1, uh, in case of i equal to 1, it will be a, a 3 cross 2 matrix, 3 cross 2 matrix. So, uh, let us write down, let us see when we get B, 1 1 so let's see what this matrix b11 1, 1 would be so in in b11 1, 1, uh, ij maps to 1 and therefore ij has to be 1 1 so you have to write for b11 you have to write b11 1k so 1k has to be 1 as well remember uh, this 1k becomes 1 minus 1 into 2 two dimensional problem plus k will give you 1 therefore k has to be equal to 1 so the first term in uh, the one one -th term in the B matrix that we create out of this this tensor is B one 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 and B one 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 will be del n one del x one and delta k j is one so this is del n one del x one so what would be B one two Again, uh, ij has to be 1, b12, so ij has to go to 1, and ik has to go to 2. So, when ik goes to 2 for node number 1, then k is equal to 2. So, uh, k is, this k is equal to 2, but j is equal to 1. Therefore, this is 0, so this will turn out to be 0. Uh, if you do it for uh, b uh, B21, let's say. So ij has to go to 2, therefore i and j both have to be 2. So i is equal to 2, j is equal to 2. When ij is both, both are equal to 2, then uh, this goes to 2. And k has to be equal to 1 because this goes to 1 for the first node. So this goes to 1. 
k is 1. So you will write, so this k is 1, j is 2, i is 2, m is, uh, capital I is 1. So this obviously becomes 0, so this becomes 0. If you do it for uh, b22, you will see that this gives rise to del n1 del x2 and then this will give rise to del n1 del x2 del n1 del x1. So this will be for i equal to 1 which we call b1. Similarly for capital I equal to 2 you will get b2 which will look like this with just the n1 replaced by n2 and so on till the number of nodes. If you have four nodes in a four noded uh, rectangular q4 element then you will go from b1 to b4. So this is how it works. This is just a tricky way of, uh, of enforcing uh, the, the, the known shape of the finite element B matrix through a tensor notation. But uh, the advantage is that we can now operate with the index, uh, operate with the summation, uh, summation uh, convention and use the capital and the small to convert quickly into void notation. So that, that has some advantages. So we will use this. Uh, use this uh, rather cumbersome notation, uh, but in some sense useful uh, in, in the coming slides as well. Let's, for example, try to derive the stiffness matrix in void notation uh, from the internal force. Okay, so uh, for the internal force, we have this expression, which we can write as... Uh, let's say del y del x j sigma i j t b and then we can write we can write sigma i j s c i j k l epsilon k l d v still using uh, tensor notation now here again C i j k l epsilon k l is half C i j k l u k comma l plus u l comma k. Using the symmetries of C i j k l, you can easily show, like we have done before, that this is C i j k l u k comma l. Now, in finite elements, we approximate u k as let's say n j u k capital j so this is how we approximate it these are constants so if you do u k comma l you end up with n j comma l u k j so this would be c i j k l n j comma l u k j so let's replace that so this is n i comma j c i j k l and then uh, n j comma l dv and this u k comma j u k j comes out of so this part this is your k times u so this is your stiffness matrix now uh, how do i convert this into white notation uh, to do that let us make use of this uh, definition that we have uh, that we have framed. So for the stiffness matrix, we have this n i comma j c i j k l n j comma l d v. This is what we have, and uh, then um, let us use this definition to express to write this as um, okay. so um, we had n i comma j so this is n i comma j and here we had c i j k l 
and then we had n j comma l here so uh, this i let us knock it off in in favor of r so let us write it as c r j k l and put this delta i r here and then uh, this k let us knock it off in favor of s so we are left with c r j s l delta k s n j comma l so this together these two things together uh, using this definition of b this definition of b will lead to b j r i i and l s j k you can check that out these two and then this becomes my uh, k uh, k matrix my stiffness matrix and uh, in this stiffness matrix um, uh, i i so j is a repeated index i i is a free index and j k are free indices so this would be the i i j k th component of the stiffness matrix now convert it into um, so uh, i i and uh, jk are the free indices so jr let's say it goes to some index a so this goes to a ls goes to some index b so this goes to b as well so and ii will go to uh, c where c will be C will be this and D will be so this will be D and you will be left with B B A C B A C C A B B B D, 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 which is B transpose C, B and uh, on the right hand side you will have I, I will be your uh, C and J, K will be D. So the C, D, Th component of the stiffness matrix in the wife notation will be this. So this sort of formalizes the way in which we handle uh, initial notation and transfer to wife notation.